pray. Amen. Again, we bring you greetings from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on this morning. From our overseer, Carrie Avernell McCall. And you. All right. Thank you. Here we go. The devil want to get in the way this morning and he want to try to he want to try to silence the word. But the word is going to go forward. The word of God is going to go forward and God is going to bless you on this morning because there is a word from the Lord. So please forgive us this morning as we came in a little slow. We want to get this fire burning and we want to let the Holy Ghost move through our spirits so that we can open up our ears so that we can hear what God has to say to the church on this morning. Again, I bring you greetings and I pray that you've all had a great week on this week. I pray that the God that, the God that you serve, the God that you love, that he has been answering your prayers throughout this week. Again, I want to take this time to just take a moment and I want to say thank you to you all for tuning in on Monday with myself and Sister Terry Butler. Sister Terry Butler, she done a beautiful job in interviewing me and, and giving me the opportunity and the platform to be able to encourage you through a portion of my life. I want you to keep your eyes open because there is a second part to that interview where I will go into detail about how God has done miraculous things in my life through ministry and how God has blessed me beyond what I could ever imagine through ministry. I am humbled and I just want to take this time to say thank you again to my sister Terry for just thinking about me to be able to share my life with the world that somebody would be encouraged. And so we have uh, the bishop's desk again. I uh, sent out a uh, a text, a post. I sent that out. And I'm going to keep encouraging you. Hear what the Lord is saying from the bishop's desk. There's a word from the Lord in the middle of the week that is there to bless you. There's a word from the Lord in the middle of the week to encourage you. There's a word from the Lord in the middle of the week to get you through the week. God said that he sent his word to heal you. And God has given me a word uh, uh, straight from heaven just for you. But you're going to have to take the time. And you're going to have to set out some time to hear what God is saying to you in the course of the week. We spend a lot of time doing a lot of other things. We spend a lot of time on so many different websites. But I want you to stop at the bishop's desk. And when you get that notification, I want you to take some time to hear what God is saying to you. We're hearing so many things in the land today. We, get, we, we hear what, what's going on in the news. We hear what's going on in our friend's life. We hear what's going on on the jobs. But we need to know what's going on in heaven concerning you. And so I want you to tune in. I want you to go and to subscribe. So a few people have already subscribed, and I thank God for their obedience. But there are others who, who, who send me emojis about thumbs up and, and okay, but I know that everybody may have church families. But listen, God is speaking, and you need to hear what God is saying because we're in some trying times, people, but God is able. And I'm going to keep on encouraging you to tune in. I want to share the word of God with you this morning. I want you to turn your Bibles to the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 12. There is a word from the Lord for you on this morning. I'm going to be using a lot of scripture on this morning. So I pray that you, you will be able to keep up some of you who are very uh, familiar with your Bible. Um, but if not, um, I want you to be able to just... View the screen and the scripture will be there. The
The scripture will be right there for you. Read the scripture along with me. And I pray that the scripture will encourage you. We have gone into this new year and we come into this new year and we seek to do better. We've come into this new year and we want to start the new year off doing better. We want to have a better relationship with the Lord. We want to have a better relationship with our family members. We want to do better when it comes to just personal things in our lives. We want to do better with our finances. And so we wait to the new year to make all the these, these promises to ourselves and these new year resolutions that we're going to do better. But how many of you know that we cannot make it without the Lord? And the Lord has a plan for your life. And so God wants to be first in your life. God needs to be first in your life. And so as we're still young in the year and we're still early in the year, and if some of us maybe have not set this year in order, then we want to take time and we want to set this year in order right now. And we don't want to get out the month of January and get into the month of February. And before you know it, we in July, half of the year is gone and we're still living the same old life. We still have the same old issues and we still dealing with the same old problems. But we want to let the anointing of God guide our footsteps and give us a new beginning this year. We want to be Holy Ghost filled this year. We want to be people that know the word of God. We want, to, we want to establish a better relationship with the Lord on this year. We want to make change in our life on this year. We want God to heal us on this year. We want God to give us strength on this year because we need healing from God. There are some of you out there who is listening to my voice right now and you have been get you have been dealt a hand and some issues in your health and your health is has been challenging to you but God is a healer and God desires to heal his people and there are others you out there who you know you're right there in the middle and you just need a little push a little urge to hold on to God's unchanging hand but God has the strength that you need to be able to hold on to continue to to press towards the mark of a higher calling in Christ Jesus. God has given you the strength and the strength is there and it's available to you. But we're going to have to make some sacrifice. And so we begin here in Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1. I want to extract out of this particular chapter. The Apostle Paul wrote to the Hebrew church, Wherefore seeing, we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doeth so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. And the church says, amen. The Bible here, the Apostle Paul said, we see that we have some challenges before us. We know that going into this year that there's going to be some challenges in the, going into this year. We already see the world is in a is in a bad state already. But he say, let us lay aside, let us not deal with the trivial things of our lives that's causing us not to be blessed of God. Let us lay aside those things that we dealt with in last year and we promised that we would do better going into this year. Let us lay aside the things that is causing us not to be blessed of God because there is blessings that is tied to your life that God desires to deliver in your life. But we have to learn to be strong. We have to learn to lay aside the things that really ma does not matter in our life, the trivial things. We spend too much time worrying about the trivial things that 
do not matter. And the apostle Paul said, I understand that there are some challenges there, but God is greater and God has a greater plan and he has a greater blessing plan for your life but you're going to have to lay aside the trivial things you're going to have to lay aside the things that held you up last year from receiving the blessings of God because I don't know about you but I want to receive all the blessings that God has for me Everything that God has for me in this life, uh, I want it and I want it from God. Uh, and if it means that I have to lay aside the trivial things in my flesh, then I'm going to try my best to work towards being a better child of God every day because I want to be closer with God. Uh, I want a better relationship with God. Uh, I want every blessing that he has for my life. Uh, I don't want to miss anything that God has for me because I know that everything that God has uh, it is good uh, and it is good for me uh, you got to know that everything that God has uh, for you it is good for you so the apostle Paul said let us lay it aside and he said and the sin which so easily beset us there are some things in our life there's some sin in our life that, that, that we mind more than God because it easily beset us. If it was not so, then the apostle would not have written it. But because he's, because he's in the flesh as well and he understands there are some things in this life that we love almost more than God himself. But the apostle Paul is saying that these things will beset you. These things will cause you not to receive the entire blessing and the entire package of blessings that God has for you. He said, lay that stuff aside and receive what God has for you. We're going into this new year, and some people have already made promises unto God that they was going to do this and that they were going to do that. And you better know that you got it to set your life in order. You have to address the Lord thy God first. Uh, you can't say you're going to do X, Y, and Z before you make your relationship with God right first. Uh, and Paul is saying those things in your flesh, uh, X, Y, and Z, uh, you need to lay them aside. Uh, because if you put God first, uh, he'll take care of X, Y, and Z. Uh, because X, Y, and Z uh, is, the, is, the, is the right now thing that causes you not to serve God the way that God desires you to serve him. X, Y, and Z uh, is the first thing that's causing you not to be able to get the blessing plan and the complete package of blessings that God has for you. Uh, because we are so in tune uh, with X, Y, and Z, uh, we have made God jealous. Uh, and God said that he would have no other God before him. Uh, we made promises to God. Uh, and we said that we would serve him this year year. We told him we would serve him last year. We told him we would serve him the year before. And we find ourselves uh, when we get later in the year, we see the same problems that exist last year. They exist this year. But when you in Christ Jesus, uh, the Bible said, behold, uh, those things are behind us. Uh, we said, behold, uh, we ought to look forward and we ought to press uh, to a higher calling in Christ. Christ Jesus. Uh, we got to stop it, church, uh, and we got to lay aside these things uh, that's causing us not to be able to serve God the way that we said that we would, uh, because God is a great God. Uh, he's a loving God. Uh, he's a caring God. Uh, he's a healing God. And we don't have time, church, uh, to keep lying to God, uh, because time is winding up, uh, and Jesus is soon to come. Uh, but I want to get the blessings from God. I want the full anointing from God. I want the strength of God. I need God to heal my body. So the promises that I make to God, I'm going to hold on to them. And I'm not going to let them easily slip away from me. So the apostle Paul said, but we have to run this race with patience because it is set before us. And so 
The Apostle Paul wrote this in to the Hebrew church. And he was saying that I understand. He said, I understand that you're going through, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. More than anything we want from God, we want, we want healing blessings from God. You know, so many of us out there, it could be a physical healing or it could be a spiritual healing. But going into a new year, we want God to heal us. And God has the healings, whether it be in your physical. There are some people out there right now who have been diagnosed with so many sicknesses. And your body has been, has been attacked by so many different things. But God has healing for you. God has the deliverance and healing for you. And there are others one, there's others of you out there who your mind has been attacked and, and you don't know where it has come from and the devil has attacked your mind. But I want you to know this morning that God will heal your mind right now. But all you have to do is believe. I want you to turn your Bibles to, well, I, you don't have, if you have your Bibles, you can turn them. But if you don't, I want you to read along with me on the on the screen i want to go to jeremiah 33 jeremiah 33 and again if you don't have your bible with you i just want you to read along with me on the screen jeremiah 33 and 6 the word came to jeremiah and 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 he said behold this is god i will bring it health and cure Whatever you've been dealing with, God said, behold, look, I will bring, I will bring it health and I will cure and I will cure them and I will reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth. See this peace. Some of y'all are dealing with your mind issues and you just can't seem to find peace. Some of you are dealing with physical issues and God said that he will cure you. He dealt with both right here in this scripture. He dealt with both the physical and he dealt with the mind because some of us we need peace in our mind and God has peace for your mind. You just can't seem uh, to get to a place of peace and understanding. But God said that he would do it for you. Some of us, uh, we've gone to the doctor and the doctor has said some things that we was not expecting. Uh, he even said some things uh, that we did not want to hear. But God who sits high and he looked low, uh, he said that I will heal you uh, and I will not only heal your body, but I will give you peace. In verse 7, he said, and I will cause the captivity of Judah and the captivity of Israel to return, and I will build them as at the first. See, this is restoration here. God is ready to build you back up. The promise you made to God, uh, he's right there with you to meet you with your New Year resolution. Uh, and the healing that you need in your body and the healing that you need in your mind. Uh, God has said that I'm here to restore you uh, the way that you was when you first came into the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm ready to set you back uh, on solid ground. Uh, I'm ready to allow you to continue in the liberty wherewith I've made you free. It's here for you, but I need you to keep your word, and I need you to lay aside every weight that have easily beset you. I need you to lay aside the things that is trivial in your life. I need you to press towards a higher calling in my dear son who I sent to the world. I need you to hold on to my unchanging hand, because I'm going to 
would do just what I said I would do. God is here to bless you on this morning. Somebody got up this morning and their body was racked with pain. Somebody got up this morning that had been diagnosed with cancer. But God said that I'm going to cure your body. Somebody got up this morning and their heart was heavy and they need their mind regulated. And God said that I was going to send you peace and put you in a better place. But you got to hold on. And he said that he would build you back up to the first uh, and I will cleanse them from all their iniquity there are some of us we've been trying we've been trying as hard and we've been trying to do the right thing uh, but God said that I will cleanse you whereby they have sinned against me uh, all of us have fallen short of the glory of God uh, but God is still able and I will pardon all their iniquities oh hallelujah God said uh, even though Though you have sinned against me and you've made a new year resolution and you did not hold fast to it he said that I will forgive you and I will cleanse you and I will not only do that but I will give you a pardon and it can't nobody hold it against you even the angels in heaven they can't hold it against you because whom the son has set free he's free indeed and you are free in Christ Jesus this morning. Now there's no more condemnation to them that love the Lord. Why? Because God has pardoned you on this morning and whereby they have transgressed against me and it shall be to me a name of joy and praise and honor before all the nations and of the earth which shall hear all the good that I do unto them. Everybody's going to be able to hear it's not going to be a secret. Uh, people are going to be able to see the blessings uh, that God has bestowed upon your life uh, because the glory of God, uh, it will rest upon you uh, when you begin to hold on to God uh, and don't let him go. Uh, God is going to bless you before all mankind. Uh, the same people that called you crazy uh, for serving a God that you've never seen, uh, they're going to be able to see the blessings of God. Uh, and some of y'all have been blessed already uh, in an abundance. Uh, God has made a way uh, out of no way. Uh, he has healed you, uh, and he's been and he's been consistent on his promise. Uh, you don't know how you was going to make it, uh, but God made a way out of no way. Uh, you woke up, uh, and God made a way uh, when there was no way. Uh, you woke up, uh, and there was money in your account. You woke up and your body was feeling better. Why? Because when you laid down last night, you accepted Jesus Christ and you exalt his name high in all the earth. And God has been consistent in his blessings. It's not time to let go. It's not time to turn our back on God because we're going to be making our way out of here real soon. And I want to be with God. God, uh, when he sent Jesus through the sky, I want to see Jesus uh, just as he is. He said he's going to bless you and everybody going to be able to see it. And they're not only going to be able to see it, but they're going to know that it's something supernatural about the blessing that's going on in your life. <laughs> It's going to be, it's going to bring fear on people because what the, what, the, what the world said the outcome would be and what the end would be, God has changed it because it was impossible for, for, for man to believe that you could be delivered from the circumstances. It was impossible for the circumstances to turn around and be in your favor. And man is going to begin to wonder how you was able to come out of some of the circumstances. But God 
God is going to sit you high and he's going to exalt you amongst your peers. God is going to bless you and he's going to let everybody see that he's on your side. And people are going to be afraid to come against you because they know that God Jehovah, he's right now present with you. People are going to see the blessings of God reigning over your life. It's restoration time. And God said here that he's here to heal you. I want to I want, I want I wanna go to Proverbs 17 and 22. Just follow me. Just follow me on the screen. Proverbs 17 and 22. Going into the new year, remember... We, we, we desire that God would heal us. We ask God to take away the affliction. And God spoke in a proverb and he said, A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit drieth the bones. See, sometimes in the physical, there are some things that that we're going to have to deal with in the physical. Sometimes there's some affliction that's going to come in our bodies in the physical that's not going to pass. But that has nothing to do with the state of your heart and how you can rejoice you can rejoice unto the Lord thy God regardless of the affliction of the flesh. Because one thing we do know, that we all are going to die one day in the flesh to live forever and eternal. And the Bible says here in Proverbs 17, 22, a merry heart doeth good. It's like medicine. Even though my body is afflicted, my heart is happy in Jesus. And that goes back to the peace that God said that he would give you because your mind is stayed on Jesus. Because the affliction in your flesh is worn against the spirit spirit in you. But the Bible says uh, that a merry heart, uh, being happy and content in Christ Jesus, uh, it's like medicine. Uh, it'll heal your mind. Uh, it'll give you the peace. Uh, it will allow you to deal with the affliction that's in your body. And if there's no affliction in your body, uh, it will allow you to deal with the affliction uh, that's in your surroundings. Uh, a merry heart will give you peace. Uh, but if you don't have a happy heart in Jesus. Uh, he said that that dry spirit, uh, it will kill the bones uh, because there's some of us, uh, we've been given diagnosis uh, and we have our head hung down uh, and we act like the world has come to an end. Uh, we act just like the world, uh, like we have no hope. Uh, but the Bible says uh, that if I stay happy in Jesus, uh, that it'll be like medicine. Down in my heart, there's no reason that my afflictions in my body, that they take precedent over my happy heart. Somebody out there need to hear me on this morning. You deal it with afflictions, but the afflictions are not greater than God. The afflictions has nothing to do with the mindset that you should have in Christ Jesus. Because you got to understand that your spirit is always willing to serve God. The spirit in you is always willing to exalt Jesus regardless of the circumstances. Know that you are more than conquerors. Know that the spirit of God in you, God gave it to you for a reason, not to be sad, but to have a merry heart and exalt the name of Jesus. Jesus high in all the earth. It's like medicine, the Bible says. It, it will heal you. But a broken spirit, it's going to dry you up and it's going to kill you. Jeremiah, Jeremiah 17 and 14. Jeremiah 17 and 14. I just, 
I just came here to encourage you on this morning. That's all. I just want to encourage you to, to, to lay a weight, lay every weight aside. Because listen, we're all going through. We're all going through. Jeremiah 17 and 14. The writer says, heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Oh, hallelujah. Save me, and I shall be saved, for thou art my praise. Look here, this, this is the anointing power here. You see here where you got to speak it. God has allowed you to speak it. If you want it, if you want it, then say it. The, the writer here, Jeremiah said, heal me. He, he told God, he told him to heal me. If you, want, if, you, if you want healing from God, he said, and I shall be healed. If you want healing from God, then say, God heal me. And then, and then you say after that, and I shall be healed. If you want deliverance from God, say, God deliver me and then after that you say and I shall be delivered if you need peace from God say God give me peace uh, and I shall have peace uh, if you want the anointing down on the inside and you desire the gift of the Holy Ghost uh, then say God uh, give me the full gift of the Holy Ghost and I shall be filled uh, if you want it from God uh, then you gotta speak it uh, and you gotta believe uh, that when you ask Ask God that he said he would not withhold no good thing from you. You want to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Say, God in heaven, the Alpha and Omega, fill me with your precious Holy Ghost and I shall be filled. You want it, you say it in authority and God will do it for you. And, and, and I want you to go right over to 17 and verse 18. Jeremiah 17 and 18. You, even some of us, we, got, we have people that come against us. You say it to God. God, move my enemy. Enemy, you shall be moved. You say, God, confound the mind of the devil that's working against me. Devil, you shall be confound. And God will do just what you said he would do. You said let, in verse 18, let them be confounded that persecute me. There are going to be some, some that come against you. But you're going to have to speak it to God. And you're going to have to say, God, deliver me from my enemies. And I shall be delivered. But let not me be confound let them be dismayed God dismays the mind of the devil and devil you shall be dismayed but let not me be dismayed God bring upon them the day of evil everybody who has come against you and have set traps up for you God, you let their end be evil, and it shall be evil, and destroy them which uh, have double destruction. God, destroy my enemy, uh, and it shall be double destruction. Uh, you have the power, you have the anointing uh, to speak your existence. Uh, God, do it, and it shall be done. Thus saith the Lord unto me, go and stand in the gate of thy children, of the people, whereby the kings of Judah come in, and by which they go out and all the gates of Jerusalem, and say unto them, hear ye the word of the Lord. I want you to go down to Jeremiah 30 and 17. 
I hope this is blessing you and encouraging you that you are powerful in, in the name of Jesus, that there is power in the children of God, that there is power in your existence, there is power in your words, there is power in your footsteps, there is power in your prayer life, there is power in the hands that you have, there is power in your mind because you're hidden in Christ Jesus. It makes you powerful and I want you to go on this year and I want you to speak your existence into reality and I want you to tell God to do it and I want you to say it shall be done. Jeremiah 30 and 17. I hope you're able to follow me on the screen. He said, for I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds, saith the Lord. This is a promise from God. This is why it's so important that we don't renege on our New Year's resolution that we made unto God, because God said, I'm going to do my part. I'm going to restore your health. What man thought was impossible, all things are possible with God, and I will heal thee of thy wounds, uh, saith the Lord. Why? Because they called thee out of Zion. Oh, hallelujah. He said, I'm going to heal you because, you because they called thee an outcast uh, and saying, this is Zion whom no man seeketh after. But God said, look, I'm going to rephrase this. Uh, he said, I'm going to heal you uh, because you called me uh, out of Zion. I know what the scriptures say. Uh, the scriptures say uh, that they called you an outcast, uh, but I'm going to tell you uh, that God going to heal you. Uh, why? Because you called him out of Zion. Uh, God's going to bless you. Uh, why? Because you called him out of Zion. Uh, God's going to heal you. Uh, why? Because you called him out of Zion. Uh, how many of you know uh, that as a child of God, uh, when you call his name, Jehovah Jireh. When you call his name, Jehovah Nisi. When you call his name, Jehovah Rapha. He's going to come out of Zion. And what you speak, it shall be done. You ought to give God the praise on this morning. You ought to be exalted in the name of Jesus. On this morning. And then, then he said to Hebrews, he said, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, which means we need strength. We need strength to be able to endure because there's going to be some affliction. There's going to be some trials. Proverbs 18 and 10, another promise from God. Proverbs 18 and 10. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. The name of the Lord. <laughs> I don't know if y'all got that. I don't know if that really hit home with you. It said that the name, the name, look at this, it's on the screen. The name of the Lord. <laughs> Is a tower is a strong tower. So if you land on your on your bed of affliction, if you just call on the name of Jesus, oh hallelujah! The Bible says that His name is is strong, is strength in the name of Jesus. If your body and your mind is ready to fail thee and give up, the Bible said that the name of Jesus. 
Jesus is strong. Call on the name of Jesus this morning because his name is strong. The righteous runneth into it and will save if you can't find peace and refuge in your mind. There's refuge in the name of Jesus. There's peace and safety in the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is everything that you need. It will protect you in the name of Jesus. There's protection in the name of Jesus. It's safety in the name of Jesus. It's love in the name of Jesus. It's promises in the name of Jesus. It's keeping anointing in the name of Jesus. There, in the name of Jesus, Psalms 46, I just wanted to share the word with you today. That's all I wanted to do was share the word. Psalms 46, going into this new year, we want to stay on track, church, going into this new year. Psalms 46 and 1, God is our refuge and strength, and able to run this race with patience and even and able to endure till 2022. If the Lord should tarry, we're going to need to find refuge in God. But the word of God say he is, which means right now. He's omnipresent. His refuge is available right now. And not only is it, is it a hiding place, but in that hiding place, uh, it becomes a filling station. Uh, you get filled up uh, because as you go into refuge, uh, the Bible says uh, that is strength in the refuge. Uh, so when you go in God, uh, expect change. Uh, when you go in God, expect to come out uh, stronger than you went in. Uh, when you go in God, expect for the anointing. Uh, to blow up in your life uh, when you go in God don't expect to be the same uh, because in his hiding place uh, there is strength uh, to the children of God he's a very present help uh, in trouble uh, when you're hiding in Jesus uh, know that the trouble that exists uh, that it won't exist no more because as long as you're hiding in Jesus uh, the devil don't know where where you at <laughs> because the devil uh, he can't come back to heaven no more uh, he's been kicked out uh, and he can't come back uh, so go and hide uh, in Jesus Christ uh, call on his name uh, Jesus Christ and God said he's a very present help Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. God's going to move the tribulation out of your way. Though the waters there roar, even though uh, it's going to be trouble all around you, uh, and even though there's going to be problems that exist, uh, continue to keep your refuge in God. He said, Though these things are going to happen, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, there is a river, hallelujah, the streams whereof shall make me glad, the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High, God is in the midst uh, of her, even in the midst of your storms. Uh, God is there, uh, even in the midst uh, of your tribulation. Uh, God is there. Uh, he said he'll never leave you, uh, nor will he forsake you. Uh, God is there all the time, uh, even when you thought you were by yourself. Uh, God is in the midst. Uh, she, she shall not be moved. Uh, 
God shall help her. And that right early. God is up early moving before you even, before you even open your eye. God is right there with you. When you get up in the morning, God has been there all night. A very present help in the time of trouble. You ought to feel good this morning to know that God is right there with you. And while you're going through, you're not going through alone. Why you can't find peace? There's peace in Christ Jesus. Why you feel like you can't make it? There's refuge in Christ Jesus. Nehemiah, Nehemiah, 8 and 10. Nehemiah said, then he said unto them, go your way. Look, eat the fat and drink the sweet and send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. God's going to bless you and he's going to bless you in an abundance. You're going to be able to eat. You're going to be able to eat the sweetness of God and there's going to be there's going to be some left over for them who are lacking without. God is going to bless you because you decided to exalt the name of Jesus because you kept your promise. God said in Nehemiah, he said, you're going to be able to eat the fat and drink the sweet and it's going to be some left over for them who is just dragging their feet for this day is holy unto our lord whenever god is doing something in your life it's a holy day and every day in your life should be a holy day neither be ye sorry for the joy of the lord is your strength god is your strength he says it consistently that the joy of the Lord being happy with Christ Jesus and what he has done for you that is your strength going down to the gym and lifting all the weights it's not your strength having a bank account that have so many zeros is not your strength but the joy of Jesus Jesus Christ coming down through 40 and two generations. Uh, that is your strength. Uh, being happy uh, that Jesus Christ died for you. Uh, that is your strength. Uh, being happy uh, and having your mind stayed on Jesus. Uh, that is your strength. Uh, giving God the praise uh, for sending his only back begotten son uh, into the world. Uh, that is your strength strength because your strength is in Christ Jesus and we wonder why we're not able to move into a place of happiness because you're not happy in Jesus but when you get happy in Jesus and exalt his name I declare you'll find yourself being full of joy when the world is in a place of destruction when you see nothing but this devastation in the land when you see but nothing but murder in the streets but because I am hiding in Christ Jesus I am happy in thee you ought to give him the glory because the Lord is my strength Isaiah 41 and 10 Isaiah Isaiah says it in 41 and 10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. And the church says, amen. I pray that God's word blessed you on today. All I wanted to do today was just give you the word of God. I just wanted to share the scriptures with you and remind you to keep your New Year's resolution with the Lord. 
If there's anyone out there that needs prayer, I pray with you through the spirit right now. And I pray that the anointing, that the anointing that's on my life, that it will touch your life right now. And that the power of the Holy Ghost would answer whatever there is that you de desire. But just as the word said on today, speak it and it shall be done. I want to just encourage you to speak those things. Speak those things and claim those things. And God shall do it. God shall do it. God shall do it. If there's somebody who don't know Jesus in the pardon of their sin, if you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, if you want Jesus a part of your life, I want you to pray this prayer after me because the Bible said that confession must be made about your sins. You must be godly sorry for the wrong that you have done. And if you are godly sorry and you confess your sins before God, God said that he is faithful and just to forgive you. You must say these words, Lord Jesus, please forgive me of all of my sins. Come into my life and save me from those sins. I accept you, Lord, as my Lord and my Savior, being the Son of the Most High God, sent by the Father in Jesus' name. And if you prayed that prayer, I believe right now you've just received the Holy Ghost. I believe that you're saved from your sins. But what you must do now is find yourself a church home. And you must be led by the word of God. If you don't have a church home, you can go to my description. There's a form there. You can fill that form out and you can become a member of the Community Church Outreach Center. Where yours truly, Bishop Michael McCullough, would be your pastor. I would lead you into all paths of righteousness through the word of God. Not of my own, but what God say. I will give you what God say, not what I say. And I will let God use me to help you mature in the word of God. I want you to remember Maranatha Christian School, grades K-5 to 5th grade. If you're in need of education for your child, we have a school here just for your child. It is our desire that the children do not slip while we're yet in this pandemic, that we continue to meet the needs of our children, both spiritually and academically. I want you to go to my description right now and I want you to sow a financial blessing, a financial seed to the ministry. I want you to give to the ministry. I want you to give what God has told you to give. And I want you to watch what God do for you spiritually. I pray that you have a great week on this week. I pray that God answers your prayers. I want you to wait and, uh, and, 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 and listen out for the notification on Wednesday at noon. The word that comes from the bishop desk. I love you and God bless you all. And may heaven smile upon you. Have a great week in Jesus.